Welcome back to Questing Beast, I'm Ben. Today we're doing the Questing Beast Awards for 2022. This is going to be my summary of what I think are the best books that came out in the role-playing game space that I did reviews of over the course of last year. I have eight books on my list this time, and as usual, I have just assigned them categories that I think that they did best in. But most of these books are excellent in multiple ways, so you should definitely all check them out. I'll put links to where you can get them in PDF or in print form right down there in the description below. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the very first category, which is best beginner product. A lot of people, when they discover my channel and they find out about the whole old school style of play, they want a good entry point. Where should they start for playing old school games? And there's lots of good options out there, but I think my favorite from this year is Mouse Ritter, which has a new box set. I really like box sets in general. I just really like their form factor. And this thing has everything that you're gonna need to start playing. It has a great set of rules. That's a bit of a combination of Into the Odd and Knave. And the theme is really great too. You're just a mouse, kind of a medieval mouse in a human sized world. So instead of fighting dragons or goblins or things like that, you have to confront things like owls or cats or possibly even humans. And you'll have to scale obstacles that are just human sized structures. The box set has everything you need to get started. It has a great rule book. It has uh, trackers for time and light. It has character sheets. It ha even has these little um, inventory sheets that you can cut up and put onto your character sheet to show how your different items are taking up different slots. It's very clever, it's adorable, and it's a really great overall package. All right, our next category is for best rules, and that's going to go to on downtime and demeans. And what this is, is a book on exactly what it says on the cover. If you want a lot more options and just material and content for doing downtime missions when their characters are in between adventures and they want to develop their stronghold, they want to develop their character, they want to develop a faction within the main city that takes place you know, between dungeon raids or what have you, this is probably going to be the book for you. It has tons of content that covers basically everything that you're going to need. It's also quite affordable in print or PDF form, so strongly recommend that you go check it out. All right, category number three is best Dungeon Master Inspiration. I don't think I've done this category before, but it fits this book to a T, and that one is The Dungeon Dozen. This book has been around for quite some time, but I just got around to reviewing it this year, and boy, is it packed with ideas. The whole premise is that it is a book full of D12 random tables. And these just cover the strangest, most wackiest things with just hilarious ideas one after another. So even if you don't have a uh, mission that needs one of these particular random tables, like nature goes haywire or cultural quirks, deep forest people, or strangeness on the savannah, you can just open one of these pages, point to something random on the page, and you get a great idea that you could build an adventure around. It's just so full of ideas, it's a bottomless pit of them. And once you have a book like this, you're going to never run out of things to throw at your players that are going to surprise and amuse them. Our fourth category is best setting. And that one goes to Oz. This is a setting book for you know, the city of Oz or the world of Oz. It is the second book by this particular author. The previous one was Neverland, which I also enjoyed quite a bit. And this one manages to top it in pretty much every way. It is more of a point crawl rather than a hex crawl and it covers the city of Oz and all of the surrounding area with an enormous amount of detail. The book's a lot longer than Neverland as well. Unlike a lot of standard setting books that you might find from Wizards of the Coast, this one does not skimp on the content. Every single place, location, district has dozens of ideas of people that you can find, encounters to run into, locations to explore, just more and more and more content for you to use. I have no doubt that you could run the Oz setting for probably years without ever reusing some of the same content, just because there is such a crazy volume of it. I don't know how it comes up with so many ideas so quickly, but it's great. Our next category is Best Adventure, and that award goes to Tomb Robbers of the Crystal Frontier. This is a starting adventure, which is kind of my favorite type of adventure, and it does a fantastic job in subtly teaching you all of the lessons that a first level dungeoneer would need to know. This book has a little bit of everything. It has encounters that are very difficult if the players aren't clever. There's ways that you can sneak around things or circumvent them. There's uh, very physical traps for players to tinker with. There's plenty of NPCs to encounter and a whole bunch of different ways that the adventure could turn out. You as the dungeon master don't know what's going to happen. You throw the players in and you discover along with them, which is fantastic. All right, on to our sixth category, which is a little bit related to our previous category, and that is Best Anthology. And Best Anthology has to go to 
Wyvern Songs. This is a collection of four adventures for D&D. And while I would say that any individual adventure doesn't quite live up to something as good as uh, Tomb Robbers of the Crystal Frontier, they are all extremely solid and well-designed. Another great advantage of it is that it kind of walks your character from first level up to more mid-levels if you play all four of the adventures. There's also a lot of diversity in the kinds of adventures that you get here. You get a standard dungeons, you get puzzle dungeons, you get more of a point crawl across a desert landscape, and you have a very dangerous multi-level dungeon at the end with a big giant boss. It's really rare to see a collection of adventures where all of the adventures really is a hit one after another, and I think that Wyvern Songs manages to pull that off. Our next category is Best Art from 2022, and maybe a controversial choice, I'm not really sure, but my favorite was Gozer, which I reviewed not too long ago, maybe a few months ago. This thing is so fun. It is goofy, it is wild, it is unrestrained, and the entire book is handwritten. Whether that's the, the maps, or it's the characters, or just all of the writing itself, everything is done by hand, like some sort of crazed middle schooler taken up to 11. It's just such a fun read. It has so much energy and so much life and so much enthusiasm, and that comes through in the art so strongly. All right, our final category is for best writing, and you know what, I'll give it best production values as well. And that one is The Book of Gob. This is a book of spells put out by Lost Pages, and I love Lost Pages spells. They have a whole bunch of collections of these, starting with Wonder and Wickedness, and this is one of the most beautiful editions that they've put out yet. So just starting with the writing, it was done by a number of different authors who all work together, but somehow they managed to hit this exact tone of it's creepy, it's spooky, it feels a little bit like Goosebumps meets Stephen King, and it just cre creeps into the back of your mind and sticks there. Um, it's called The Book of Gob because it's all themed around the hand of Gob, this mysterious seven-fingered hand, and each spell is tied to a particular finger which has uh, a certain theme to it. Each spell also has a little piece of microfiction before you actually get into the spell description that helps anchor it in a particular time and place and you can see how the spell would be used in a game world. The production design is really fantastic as well. It has this beautiful purple fabric cover. You can see that it has silver embossing on the front. One of the fingers that is not there is kind of invisible but you can see that it's been embossed into the actual cover of the book. The paper quality is amazing. Even the font choice is beautiful. Everything is done to this absolute perfection. So those are my top eight choices for the best RPG books of 2022. As I said before, links to those are in the description below. And if you want to, you can check out the original reviews of any of these books if you want to see in much more detail what you're going to get inside should you buy them. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time.